my dear students very good afternoon to all of you so yesterday we have discussed uh, in length the various definitions of what logical connectives the basic terminologies involved with uh, symbolic logic namely a statement formula or a compound proposition then uh, concept like tautology contradiction contingency and what logical equivalence etc also we learned how to construct uh, the truth table of what formulas by using the various uh, logical connectives and we try to initiate a discussion on what a number of illustrative examples so based on all these concept just to make sure that we understand everything completely 100% so today keeping this view in mind today also we'll briefly go through the logical connectives so that you understand on how to construct the truth tables first then i'll briefly again explain you the concept of tautology contradiction contingency we'll have a, a lengthy tutorial today various illustrative examples will be discussed here in this class also toward the fag end of the program we shall consider a discussion on what various methods of proof including logical and what legal or mathematical proofs and uh, in this construct we will be discussing the various rules of what inference theory and how to use the rules to solve problems appearing in decision taking so all this will be done today now the various logical connectives to begin with what is a negation operator just remember if p is a proposition then not p is called what negation p or uh, not p is called negation of the proposition p right now whenever p is a true proposition its negation will be what false on the other hand if p is a false proposition then its negation will be what a yeah, true proposition the same situation is explained by using the binary number we can even assign the number 1 instead of what t to mean that the proposition considered is what true in sense so 0 will stand for what the proposition is a false one understood so how to construct the truth table for p and its uh, negation then coming to logical or operator this is actually what p disjunction q this symbol stands for what disjunction or p logical or q right so this proposition by definition it is a compound proposition please remember a compound proposition mean it is a proposition obtained by combining simple propositions and using a logical connective so we can claim that p or q is a compound proposition what is a compound prop what is a what is logical or what is this uh, p disjunction q so this is a proposition remember this will take the truth value f only when what both p and q are what false otherwise it is always a true proposition very simple to construct the truth table of what p logical or q right all you have to remember when p is false and q is false p or q is false for all the possible other choices p or q is what always true now as you notice that here there are in the truth table there are what four rows so this is because that uh, for the proposition p there are exactly two choices either it will be true or it will be what false similar thing holds good even for what q therefore total number of choices for what p or q will be 2 into 2 equal to 4 which we got it by using the multiplication principle understood then uh, p conjunction q this symbol stand for conjunction p logical and conjunction also is viewed as logical and now so how to define p and q again it is a compound proposition its truth value is what true only when both p and q are true otherwise it is always what a yeah, false proposition remember so how to write p and q without looking too many books or notes immediately you can write on if p is true q is true then p and q is true otherwise it is always a yeah, false proposition as you notice that uh, conjunction and disjunction operators have contrasting uh, qualities so therefore normally we call these two as what dual operators then nand operator so what is nand operator this is not and and non means not and and that means first apply and operator to which you apply the negation operator so p nand q is exactly what negation of what p and q negation of p and q i hope you have learned how to construct the truth table of what p and q from the previous slide so if i take negation to this i'll get what the truth table represents for p and q again it is a compound proposition with what four 
choices. Am I right? So, this is true. So, its negation is false, false, true, false, true, etcetera. Now, similarly, P nor Q, it is actually nor not and R, not and R. So, first apply R operator, then apply the negation. As good as telling P R and P nor Q is very much same as what negation of what P R Q. We use this symbol to represent what nor operator. So, we have learnt already how to construct uh, the truth table of P R Q starting from the truth values of for P and Q. I know that P for P R Q as I explained that P it will be false only when what both P and Q are false otherwise it is true you can notice here. So, by taking the negation we will get uh, the truth table, truth table truth values for negation of P R Q or P R nu. Once again note it that that none the nor operator also are examples of what dual operator. In the earlier side we have seen that first 3 T's uh, what first F followed by what 3 T's am I right here first F followed by 3 T's here first 3 F followed by what T. So, we can claim that none the nor operators are also examples of what dual logical operators. So, then we considered uh, the one sided implication, one sided implication which can be said in a number of ways P implies Q or Q follows from P. If P then Q, P is sufficient for Q okay, like this. Now, how to remember uh, the truth table for P or Q? Please remember when P is true and Q is false then P or Q is what false and for all other instances the truth values of P implies Q is always what true easily you can rem easily you can remember if P is true Q is false then P or P implies Q is false otherwise it is always true. Then uh, coming to the biconditional, this is stands for biconditional logical operator. I told you whenever P and Q assign or assume mean the same truth values, then P biconditional we assume the truth value T. For example, here both P and Q are what true. So, we will put the symbol T here to mean that P biconditional Q is a true proposition. Similarly, when P and Q assume the same truth value F that is when both P and Q are false still we by conditional Q will assume the truth value T and for the remaining two choices P by conditional Q is a false proposition understood how to construct the truth table of P by conditional Q. So, T T T F F T T F or for F T it is F then this symbol stands for the logical exclusive R that is either P is true or Q is true, but not both are true, but not both are true. So, this is called what exclusive logical R operator. So, what about the truth table of P exclusive R Q? Now, I told you this is this symbol stands for either P is true or Q is true, but not both are true. So, therefore, will when P is true Q is true, we will put the symbol F to mean that P exclusive R Q is a false proposition and uh, when P and Q are both false hence here also we will put the symbol F to mean that this is a false proposition. On the other hand when P is true Q is false or P is false Q is true then P exclusive R Q is a true proposition. So, these are uh, some of the logical connectives we have in the literature to begin with negation conjunction, disjunction, one sided implication, two sided implication and then what logical exclusive R. Now, this I explained yesterday also what is a statement formula or a compound proposition. A proposition obtained by combining a number of simple logical variables or simple proposition and using a number of logical connectives and uh, the expression obtained must contain what proper parenthesis then it is called what a statement formula or a well formed formula or simply a statement or a compound statement. From now onward we shall mean that a statement means what it is a statement formula. Now, as you notice yesterday that this is an example of what valid statement formula because you can find a proper parenthesis and also what the variables are connected very properly, but this is not a standard statement formula or a valid uh, this is an invalid formula because here although this makes sense also this makes sense this makes sense, but here I have used the logical R operator I must have I should have used another logical variable here which is not used here something is missing here. So, it is not a valid formula also you can find that 
there is no proper parenthesis here. If you count from left, 1, 2, then what? 3. There are 3 parentheses from the left. Now, what about from the right? 1, 2, 3, then what? For there is an imbalance. So, therefore, it is not considered as a valid statement formula. You can verify that this is a valid formula. Now, you see, wherever I used uh, logical connectives, right, either here or here or here, I can find that two variables are what combined, unlike here. Also, we can find the proper parenthesis 1, 2, 3, then 4. What about here? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, so first one and last one are examples of what valid statement formulas. Now, we can proceed to the next one. Now, suppose if you have statement formula contains say n logical variable starting from P1, P2, P3, P4 up to Pn. Say, I have a formula consisting of n logical variables and some of the logical connectives. I am interested in constructing the truth table of what? This formula. So, how many rows will be there in the truth table is my question. The answer is what? 2 power n. There will be totally 2 power n rows in the truth table of what? The statement formula because, because we know that for each of the n proposition there are exactly what? two choices, either a proposition is true or a proposition is false. So, each proposition has got two choices. So, totally we have got n proposition. So, total number of choices will be what? 2 into 2 into 2 up to n time that will be 2 power n. Understood? Now, what is a tautology? A tautology means is the following. So, consider a statement formula made up of say k logical variables and some of the logical connectives. I know that the truth table of A will contain 2 power k rows. Okay. Now, for each of the 2 power k option, if I find that the truth value of A as always true, then it is called a tautology. I repeat, if you have a formula A consisting of k logical variables okay, and some of the connectives are used to formal to create the formula A. We know that if you construct the truth table of A, there will be 2 power k rows. Now, for each of these 2 power k rows, if the truth value of A, it will appear at the last column. Okay? Last column, if the truth value of A will, if, if it turns out to be always true, then it is called a tautology or universally valid formula or universally accepted formula. Now, on the other hand, suppose if for each of the 2 power k option, if I find that if I find that the truth value of A as always false, okay, then it is called what? A contradiction or an absurdity. As good as telling, a statement which is true for all conditions is a tautology. A statement which is false under all instances, then it is a contradiction. On the other hand, there are statements we come across, it will be, it will take the truth value true or false depending upon the condition, depending upon the condition, such statements are called as what? Contingency. For example, if you make the statement today as today is Tuesday, yes, the answer is what? True. Suppose the universe comprises say the, Indi as far as Indians are concerned, as far as uh, Indians are concerned. So, today is what? Tuesday, no doubt about it. Therefore, it is a tautology. Now, suppose if I go and make the same statement somewhere else in the world where there could be some night, possible say maybe America, it will be pre it will be some Monday's night. It is not early Tuesday, but Monday's night. So, if I make the statement, same statement in the United States of America, possibly I cannot accept that is to be what true. So, I have to say that the statement is what? Yeah, contradiction. Right. So, it depending upon the condition, right, we can make the statement, right, we can say a statement true or false. Yes, so, no, understood the difference between tautology, contradiction and contingency. Contingent means a statement which takes both true and what? False values, which takes both true and false values that is called what? A yeah, contingency. I will, I will explain the same by using a, an example later. Now, for example, an example for what? Tautology. Now, you, you construct the truth table of what? P and P implying Q or both these together implying what? Q. Now, if you construct the truth table of this, again we have got only two variables P and Q. So, there will be four uh, choices. I can consider four choices for P and Q. Now, I know that if a truth table of what? P implies Q. What is that? T F means what? Immediately I can notice T F means F. Otherwise, it is what true. Even closing the eyes, I can write. 
I know that this is false only when p is true, q is false. So, I can write write immediately thereafter only what t. Now, notice that p implies q is an example of what contingency. Why p implies q is a contingency? It is neither a tautology nor a contradiction, but a contingency because p implies q assumes what both true and what false values both t and f. So, p implies q is an example of what a yeah, contingency. Now, I consider p implies q as what a. Now, what is b? p and uh, a. Now, now what about p and a? This will be true only when what both p is true and what a is true. For example, here p is true, a is true. So, p and a is what true. What about for other choices? t f it is f, f t it is f, f f f t is again what f. Okay. Now, I want to ensure that I want to find the I want to find the truth now truth table for what b implying q because I consider from here to here I consider this as what b. Now, b implying q. Now, t t is what f compare b with q compare second and what fourth column. So, t t means what t f f means what t f t means what f and then what f f means t. So, what do you find that this formula assumes what always the truth value t in the last column. So, therefore, we can conclude that so p and what p implying q is a tautology understood how to find a weather formula tautology all you have to do suppose you have working with smaller problems like a problem containing two variables or three variables you can always consider a truth table construct a truth table method as an option. So, construct the truth table looking at the last column we can infer whether a formula is what tautology or not understood. One more thing I have explained yesterday the concept what is called what logically equivalent statement. I told you we will never use uh, the equal statement. We will never say that two statements are what equal because statements are written in uh, language and we know that every language has got what fluency whether it is English, Spanish, Kannada or Tamil or Malayalam all languages are what very fluent right. A, sing, a, a simple statement or a single statement can be interpreted in a number of ways. Therefore, we will never say that the two statements are what one and the same. Of course, both the statement have word by word right letter by letter conjunction by conjunction or punctuation by punctuation if everything same then only I can claim that what two statements are what equal. For example, if I take A as statement for example, if I consider A as what statement A as statement I will I will say B also as statement ok. So, then I can claim that A and B are what equal because A is statement B is also statement ok right. So, therefore, we can claim here that A and B are what equal otherwise not. Now, coming to the definition of logical equivalence I can say that two statements are logically equivalent only when both A and B have same set of truth values for each of the truth value assignments to the components of what A and B that is a you consider the truth table choices for both A and B. Suppose you find that A and B assumes what same truth values then I can claim that A and B are what logically equivalent. Also I can say that A and B are logically equivalent only when you construct the truth table of A biconditional B. If A biconditional B is a tautology then also we say that what A and B are logically equivalent. So, this is a symbolic notation that we use to say that A and B are what logically equivalent. A is logically equivalent to B or I can say that B is logically equivalent to A. For example, you consider uh, this problem, consider uh, this problem we are interested in finding whether P exclusive R Q and P and negation Q or negation P and Q are logically equivalent. Now, because I got only what two variables P and Q, I know the truth table will have only four rows, only four choices. So, truth table method is what appropriate. All I have to do is to construct what the truth table of what this formula, also the truth table of what this formula. Now, suppose if I find that these two formulas have same set of truth values, fine, I can say that these two are what logically equivalent. This we shall see by constructing this truth table. So, to begin with first two columns for P and Q, then P exclusive R Q, then I have got uh, the truth table of what negation P, truth values for negation Q, then 
are considered A as what? P and negation Q, B as negation P and Q. Finally, I want what? A or B. Now, we know that P exclusive R. What is P exclusive R means? Either P is true or Q is true, but not both are true at the same time. So, T T will, will bring F here, T F will bring T here, F T will bring T here, but F F will be what? F because of the definition. Now, what about for negation P? T will be replaced by F, T will be replaced by F again, F will be replaced by T. Understood? Now, for negation Q, here it is Q is true. So, negation Q is false. Here Q is false. So, here negation Q will be true. Here Q is true. Negation Q is what? False. So, Q is false. Negation Q is true. Now, we know that P and negation Q. What is P and negation Q? This will be true only when both P and negation Q are what? True. So, we have to look for where? Here you see P is true and then I got negation Q is true. Therefore, what? P and negation Q is what? True. And for all other choices, it is true. Right? Please remember, once you find P and Q or P and negation Q is true, so there is no need to check for others. Simply you can write on F because if I got two proposition, only for only once the truth, only one we will find the truth value T that is only when both are what true. Now, similarly here you can find that the third row negation P and Q we will assuming what true T truth value T because tell me negation p is true fine negation p is true here q is true see negation p is true q is true therefore negation p and q is what true immediately put f in the other slot okay now a or b what about for a or b i told you a or b will be false only when both a and b are what false otherwise it is always what true for example here f f both are false so, A or B false. Once again, I have got here last row A and B are false. So, this. Now, compare the third row and the last column. If we make a comparison of what? The third row and the last column. What do you find? That both these columns have got what? Same set of truth values F T T F. Here also F T T F. So, therefore, I claim that, that these two formulas are what? Logically equivalent. Understood? How to show two formulas are logically equivalent by constructing the truth table, it is possible to find out whether the formulas are what logically equivalent. So, you can also practice the same by considering uh, some exercise section problems from the prescribed book. right? Now, this problem we had considered yesterday, we'll just briefly go through it. Now, I want to find the truth value assignments for the five variable. Now, we have given you here that P and Q and R, this implication is false. I am given you that the implication is false. Okay. Now, implication is false means what? What I am given to you that the implication is what? False. The implication can be false only when what? This one P and Q and R is true and SRT is what? False. Please remember, right? This must be true this must be false, then only I can have the implication as what false as required in the problem based on that. So, it is possible. Now, when this will be true, only when all the three are what true. When SRT will be false, only when both S and T are what. So, therefore, what is the answer to this problem? Right? The answer is P, Q and R assuming the truth value T, but S and T are what must be assigned the truth value F. Yeah. So, this is the solution of the problem understood. Now, for the other one, this is for exclusive R. Okay. Again here, this must be true. This must be true means what? I must have what? P, Q, R true. So, I got P, Q, R true. I got two rows. Why two rows here? Now, when this will be false, S exclusive R T will be false only when what? Both S and T assuming the same truth value either T or what F. I know that when S and T assume the same truth value T, then this will assume the truth value false. So, therefore, there are what? Two ways of what? Answering this problem. Understood? How I got the solution? All, all I have to remember only what? When this will be true and when this will be what? False or as good as telling when this will be false or when this will be false. Maybe based on that, we can be able to explain the answer. Now, so this was the problem, last problem yesterday we stopped somewhere there. Let me explain again the solution of this problem. So, carefully try to follow the argument. Now, here we are given to, you are given that you are given that Q has the truth value 1 that is Q is what true. Okay? Please remember Q is true. Okay? 
Now here you are given that Q is what true okay right now you are given that Q is true we want to find the truth value assignments of what the remaining P R and what yes for which the truth value of this compound proposition is true please remember you are given that this compound proposition is what true also you are given that Q is a true proposition we are interested in finding the truth values for what P R and yes now now this is a compound proposition yes or no now this is a compound proposition formed by using this logical connective and now when this will assume the truth value 1 only when what this formula is true and what this formula is what true yes or no I know that A and B is true only when both A and B are true so based on that right now this compound proposition will be true only when this is true as well as what this is true now just to simplify thing I have considered this formula as what A and this formula as what B so that this can be simply written as what A and B as I explained A and will be true only when both A and B are true statements ok now now it is given to you that Q is true now it is given to you Q is true therefore it must be clear the truth value of this formula is true can you explain me why now go back now you are given you that Q is true yes or no now Q is true now Q is true means ok right now this implication is what true this implication is true ok Q is true so right this implication understood it cannot take a false value right now for example what can say about negation or now so this implication now if Q is true can I claim that negation R as false if negation R is false then Q already true so this will assume the truth value what false ok so because this is true irrespective of negation yes I will claim that what this is a right false proposition it is not possible ok so therefore so I must have that negation P R R and negation yes is here true otherwise the, the full implication becomes false which is not true actually ok now from this we infer now when this will be true only when both negation P R R and negation yes are true so from here I get because negation S is true ok right I must get S as what false I must get S as what false ok and then now this will be what we do have that coming to the other one that B is true now here it follows that negation R is what true ok so negation right because negation R is true R must assume the truth value false now with negation P R R being already true we must have that P as a false proposition so therefore we conclude that the solution for this problem are that P must be false R must be false and what S must be false so please go through this argument and try to understand the same ok now coming to the next uh, problem that I have we are having small illustrated examples on logical connective I consider a programming segment where i j m and n are declared as what integer variables these values will be supplied during the execution of the program now what is the program code I have it is a for loop I have considered i varies from 1 to m j varies from 1 to n when the code is when i not equal to j then print the statement i star j now I am going to give you some numerical values for m and m I am interested in finding how many times the print statement is executed ok we have a programming code formed by using a for loop we are considered i j m and n are what integer variables to be supplied later right we are the problem is about how many times the print statement is executed so we are interested when m is 10 n is 10 how many times the print statement will be executed when m equal to 20 n equal to 20 m equal to 10 n equal to 20 m equal to 10 and n equal to 10 now this is a programming code ok now what is the answer when m equal to 10 n equal to 10 the program segment will be executed only for what 90 times can you tell me why when uh, i varies from 1 to 10 j varies from 1 to 10 so when we find i equal to j i equal to j appears for what i taking 1 j taking 1 i taking 2 j taking 2 i taking 3 j taking 2 3 like that i taking 10 j taking 10 for all these cases 
print statement will not be executed. Okay. So, totally the program will be executed for 100 times, yes or no? Because i varies from 1 to 10, j varies from 1 to 10, this is nested loop. So, total number of times the statement will be executed 100. Of the 100 times, right, when uh, i not equal to j, i equal to j, the statement will not be executed. So, total number of times statement will be executed for what? 90. Similarly, for m equal to 20 and n equal to 20, the print statement will be executed for 380 times. Can you tell me why? Because when i varies from 1 to 20, j varies from 1 to 20, the nested loop will be executed for 400 times, 20 into 20. Okay? Of the 400 times, the statement will not be executed for what? i equal to 1, j equal to 1, i equal to 2, j equal to 2, like that, i equal to 15, j equal to 15, i equal to 20, j equal to 20. For all these cases, the statement will not be printed. So, therefore, the answer to this problem is 380 times. Similar argument, similarly by following the argument for m equal to 10, n equal to 20, 190 times program statement will be executed. For m equal to 20, n equal to 10, program statement will be executed for 180 times. Understood how to solve a problem like this. Now, we are interested in finding the negation of this statement, right. You take down this statement, I have considered statement, if herald passes his C++ course and finishes his data structure course project, then he will graduate at the end of the semester. Now, we want the negation of this statement in smooth English and also in the symbolic form. Let us uh, make some simple uh, starting. So, take P as what herald passes C whoops course, Q as herald finishes his data structure course and herald becoming graduate at the end of the semester. Now, based on that, now how to write the statement symbolically? Tell me, if herald passes his course that is P, if P is true and if he finishes data structure course that is Q, that means what? If P is true and Q is true, then what? R is true. So, the fourth statement can written symbolically as what? P and Q implying negation R. Now, we want the negation of this statement. Take the negation of this statement throughout. Okay. Now, we know that A implies B is same as what? Negation R B, which we have seen yesterday by the truth table method. So, so that this statement or maybe P and Q implying R, I can write it as what? Negation of P and Q and R by following this uh, representative, by following this law. So, now applying the De Morgan law, negation of negation, that is double negation will get cancelled. It is P and Q and what? Negation R. Yes or no? So, therefore, the in smooth English, the same statement can written as herald passes fine and he finishes also his project, but fails to graduate at the end of the semester. Okay? So, many times we will use uh, this formula. Remember, A implies B same as negation A or B, which we have used here. Also, we have used the De Morgan law okay? right? and the double negation law to arrive at the solution. Understood? How to write a statement symbolic form? Then taking negation and then the simplification by using what? Various laws. Okay. Now, already we talked about little bit uh, duality. We did give few examples. Now, here comes the proper definition. Given a statement formula involving a number of what? Primitive statements and several logical connectives, how to find the dual? All you have to do, you replace and by what? R and R by and without disturbing the other connectives. Okay. On the other hand, if the formula contains special symbol like T or V, then T is to be replaced by F and F is to be replaced by T. Understood? How to find the duality of formula? You replace conjunction by disjunction and disjunction by conjunction without disturbing the others, we get the dual of a formula. For example, we are interested in finding the dual of this. Now, I want to find the dual of this formula. Q implies P. As we have talked about it, Q implies P is logically equivalent to what? Negation Q or P. Therefore, what is the dual? All I have to do to replace what? R by and. That is all. Now, similarly, P implies Q and R. Now, P implies Q and R is same as what? Negation P or Q and R. Now, we want the, here this formula is used here, this equivalent is used here. Okay. Now, I want to find the dual of this. What is the dual of this? You replace R by what and? And and by R, we get the dual. Understood? How to find the dual of a formula? 
of course when the formula contains symbol like implication these start to be modified in terms of what r and n then apply the duality then apply the duality rule straight away we cannot find straight away it is not possible to find similarly now p by conditional q i want to find the dual of this what is mean by p by conditional q it is p implies q and at the same time what q implies p now p implies q is same as what negation p or q q implies p is negation q or p so by taking now applying the duality formula i get what r will be replaced by and and is replaced by r here r is replaced by and so this is the dual of what this formula this is the dual of this formula understood so please remember when you want to find the duality formula containing symbol like implication or one sided or two sided rewrite the formula in terms of what conjunction and disjunction then apply the duality rule understood all of you how to find the duality formula now continuing our discussion with some other uh, concepts right we always come across the terms like converse inverse contraposite etc remember for a statement p implying q q implying p is called converse i repeat for a statement if p implies q what is the converse of the statement q implying p on the other hand what is the inverse statement negation p implying negation q negation p implying negation q is called what the inverse statement on the other hand for p implies q negation q implying it is other way negation q implying negation p is called what the contrapositive statement understood these three definitions for example if today is a labor day then tomorrow is what tuesday we want to find the converse inverse and what contrapositive statement now what are the converse of this statement if today is a labor day then tomorrow is what tuesday what are the converse statement if tomorrow is tuesday then today is labor day what about the inverse statement i just have to take the negation if today is not labor day then tomorrow is not tuesday what about the contrapositive statement if tomorrow is not tuesday then today is not labor day understood how to write the converse inverse and contrapositive statement for a one sided implication okay right the various laws we can go through the same we are discuss in case of set theory similar thing holds good here also like idempotent law commutative law associative law identity law university law universal law etc now because with respect to r we got these uh, properties i can claim that a set of proposition with respect to logical r is a discrete structure we told you earlier that this course is all about introducing what a number of what discrete structures here is what another example of what now here underlying set is a set of all proposition the operation is what logical r so right we have found another discrete structure in symbolic logic okay similar proper similar laws we can have even for what logical and operator okay i can have the commutative law the associative law the identity law and the university universal law so once again i claim that with respect to logical and operator the set of all proposition forms a discrete structure now if i combine these two logical and and what logical r we we'll get another discrete structure now this time the property will be what distributive law and property will be distributive law so i can have another discrete structure with respect to what r and and if i include uh, the negation operator then i get what the de morgan laws the double negation law so all these properties makes what the set of propositions a discrete structure okay now sometimes we will be asked to simplify thing this happens in logic design course we'll be having a huge formula we want to simplify it by applying the law for example this formula is very much simple by constructing the truth table it must be possible but let us see how to simplify this formula by using the laws which we have stated in the previous slides now what we do here we do find a number of what negation operator yes or no so therefore we shall apply here the de morgan law the double negation law and also what the observation law to simplify the above expression now to begin with consider this expression now what will i do throughout i'll apply the de morgan law so i'll use this negation of p r q is negation p and negation q so if i apply negation here i'll find what double negation here 
and then here what? Here also what? One more negation comes, it is what? Double negation. Okay? I simply apply the double negation. Now, what about double negation? So, double negation will be what? There is P R Q and R. So, here R is replaced by and I use the D Morgan law. So, negation of negation, double negation, it is Q. Okay? Now, here double negation will go. It is simply P R Q and R and Q. Right? Now, I will use the now I will use the associative law because through what I find right I can consider this as A, A and R and Q right throughout I got and operator I will slightly modify it by using the associative law. So, it becomes what P R Q and Q and R. Now, by absorption law P R Q and R Q is Q. So, therefore, right this gets simplified as what Q and R understood. So, without going to the two stable approach we have simplified it by using the various logical rules. So, similarly right try to solve some of many times you will be asked to simplify thing without using the truth table approach or by following the laws of what logic right. Now, after all this study we will come to an important part of the whole discussion with which we actually started right. So, why, why did we start uh, the logic course here? It is mainly because of learning the various methods of what proving an argument. Right. So, this problem occurs in a number of situations, especially in decision taking, especially in decision taking, namely when you work as a manager, right, right, it is necessary that you have to take decision based on what many things. So, what what are the supplementary things to be considered here? So, this we shall consider also, right. This is problem generally we get whenever write an examination or any type of test. So, always there will be a doubt in the mind of my yeah, student. So, whatever I am doing whether I am doing right or wrong at each and every step right there will be some confusion are we following in the right way are we following in a right way yes or not. For example, if you are coming to Bangalore for the first time say you see you taking your own car say from Belagam right say if you want to reach some place in Kormangala right. You, you may be knowing how to come to Bangalore town, Bangalore city entrance right from what? Belagam, but after entering Belagam how to reach Koramangala is a difficult thing because you are not came to Bangalore earlier let us assume you right follow following the roads or what traffic signals or road signals it is difficult. So, how to proceed and each and every junction so you will be having a doubt yes or no right. So, how to solve this problem? how to solve the problem right. Here there are uh, various legal or le various logical methods are available. So, this we shall uh, discuss now. To begin with let us understand what is mean by a premise. A premise means a statement which is always true under all conditions if a statement is true then it is called as what premise understood. Please remember a statement which is given to be true always is called as a premise right. Now, consider a set of what k premises k h h 1 h 2 h 3 are all premises each statement is what true always ok. Now, suppose c is the conclusion of some argument c is the some conclusion of argument we like to say that all these premises imply the conclusion only when what all these together implying c is a tautology remember what is the method saying? Just like saying H1 one junction in Bangalore, H2 is another junction, H3 is another, there could be K junction before you land up in Koramangala, ok right. If you follow the right way of what? Right roads, then certainly you will reach Koramangala. Yes or no? A situation similar to that, right. Now, if all the premises implying conclusion is a tautology, then I say that C logically follows from these premises, ok. Symbolically, I write that all this implies what? C. Okay. to be it should be read as that C is logical C follows logically from the premises or as good as telling the K premises implies C in a logical sense. To understand more let us consider some simple problem say I want to find out whether the following argument is what valid or not. Now, the first premise if you invest in stock market then you will get rich sometimes it happens. Now, if you get rich then certainly you will be happy ok. So, conclusion is therefore, if you invest in stock market then you will be happy. What do you say? Shall we agree with this today's situation? If I invest in stock market then I am going to become rich. 
if I become rich then certainly I will be happy. So, therefore, the conclusion of the argument is if you invest in stock market then you will become happy. So, to find out whether it is logically valid or not let us proceed as follows. So, set of P as what you invest in stock market, Q as what you will become rich and you will be happy. So, three variables yes or no. Now, let us try to rewrite the given premises in symbolic form. What is the first premise? If you invest in stock market then you will rich. That means what? If you invest if P is true then Q is true. So, I can write H 1 as what? P implies Q. If you invest in stock market then you will become rich. Next one, if you become rich then you will be happy that is H 2 symbolically as Q implying R. What is the conclusion? If you invest in stock market then you becoming happy. So, we are interested in finding whether H 1 and H 2 implies what C right or as good as telling if this formula is a tautology then fine I can claim that C logically follows from the two premises. So, because only three variables are involved I can construct the truth table of what this formula that will only contain eight truths ok this we shall see. Now, beginning with P Q R then H 1 then H 2 then H 1 and H 2 we can construct the truth table already I explained how to construct the truth table of what various formulas or how to remember uh, the various logical connectives. So, there will be eight options ok start constructing the truth table for all this if you find that at the end that H 1 H 2 implying C is a tautology you can uh, work out at home it is not a difficult problem I hope you understood. I am just showing the my work right you can also verify here that H 1 and H 3 implying C is a tautology because this formula has what always the truth value T. So, I can claim that that the given argument is what logically valid understood. Now, we shall consider uh, another example namely now first premise is about if I try hard and I have talent then I will become a musician this is our first statement first premise no doubt if I try hard and have talent no doubt I can become a good musician. Now, if I become a musician then I will maybe my goal is to become a musician. So, if I become a musician then I will become happy. Now, the third premise is I not become happy I am not happy. So, therefore, what are the conclusion the argument either I did not try hard or I do not have talent. Okay. Now, we want to find out whether the argument what is valid logically or not. As you notice here there are four parameters here one I try hard, second one I have talent, the third one I becoming a musician, fourth one I am becoming happy. So, in this problem there are four parameters yes or no. So, therefore, if you try to rewrite the premises in symbolic form if you follow the truth table approach the truth table will contain what 16 rows yes or no 4 variables p q r and s. So, if you construct the truth table approach or follow the truth table approach there will be 16 rows in the book or in your way of writing things. Now, so when the it is very difficult or it is it is not practically possible in a given amount of time to solve a problem like this because it involves what huge work and it is a tedious process. So, nobody would like to use right nobody would like to use two table approach when the problem contains what more than three variables or maybe more than four variables. So, therefore, here in this uh, situation it is necessary that we should use some uh, alternative strategies. You can verify that the premises are written symbolically as P and Q implying that is what if I had try hard and talent then I am going to become a musician. If I become a musician I will become what happy the, th the statement is I am not happy. So, conclusion is what either I did not try hard or I do not have talent. So, here we are interested in finding whether H 1 and H 2 and H 3 imply C a yeah, tautology ok. All I need to do is to construct the truth table of this it is not possible here let us see how to solve this problem. So, we shall use the rules of inference. Here we shall use the various rules of what inference theory and later we shall see how these rules actually helps us to solve a problem like this ok. The first rule a given premise K 
can be used at any stage during the argument because a premise is always a true statement. We can use it at any time, no restriction on that. The second rule says a statement can be replaced by an equivalent one. We have seen already. For example, P implies Q is same as what negation P R Q or negation key implying negation P that is the contrapositive property. So, therefore, right P implying Q I can well replace this either by this or by this. This is what rule number 2. Remember rule number 1 is a premise can be used at any stage during the argument. Second statement is the replacement of a formula by means of an equivalent 1. The third premise is the following in conditional proof. For example, if a problem is to determine whether A implies B or not, when nothing is told about the nature of A, I can well introduce another premise that A, that A is true. This is an additional premise can be used here. For example, I can consider this problem. Now, whether a B graduate, say in computer science, whether a B graduate gets a job or not after graduation. Now, here, right, what is my problem? If a student is a a is a computer science graduate, A is a computer science graduate, now B gets a job or not. Question is whether a computer science graduate gets a job or not. Okay? I do not know whether A is a graduate or not, okay? right? because it is all about finding whether a computer science graduate gets a job or not. I must assume that to begin with that A is a computer science graduate, then only I can answer to this question whether he will get a job or not. Okay. So, in this situation, I can start with an assumption that A is true that first of all A must be a graduate, then only he can apply for a job say in Infosys or Vipro, right? if it is the case. So, I must start with the assumption that A is a graduate. This is, this is to be used in conditional proof. The fourth rule is the following mod exponent. So, what is mod exponent rule says? Whenever P is true, P implying Q is true, then Q is what? True. This is called mod exponent. So, what is mod exponent? Whenever P is true, P implying Q is true, then Q is true. I can give one example. Suppose, if Sachin Tendulkar scores a century say in the upcoming T20 matches, say in four T20 matches, let us assume that Tendulkar is going to score a century, then he may be awarded Bharat Ratna. Okay. Suppose, if P indeed, if suppose if Tendulkar did score four centuries say in all the matches, right? we can well say there will be argument here media sources that may be supporting Tendulkar for a Bharat Ratna. Okay? Similar to that. So, what is mod exponents remain? Whenever P is true, P implying Q is true, then Q is true. This is called mod exponents. Right? We can verify. Mod exponents means whenever P implies Q is true, negation Q is true, then negation P is true. This is called what? Mod exponents. Right? What is that? If negation Q and P implies Q always implies what negation P. This is called modus tollens. How to remember? If negation Q is true, P implying Q is true, then we immediately conclude that negation P is true. Right? Then uh, coming to law of syllogism, if P implies Q is true, Q implying R is true, then certainly what P will imply? Just like P Q follows from P, R follows from Q. So, therefore, what R follows from P, this is called what law of syllogism. Also, some of the other rule like law of conjunction that whenever P and Q is true, obviously P is true, Q is true. Law of disjunction, if P is true, then certainly what P or Q is true. So, these are some of the rules that we have in logic, in then we have in rules of inference theory. Now, we you, I wish you should go back to this problem, right. Write the this already were written. Write these statements in the symbolic form and try to apply and uh, try to apply the rules of inference and find out at the end whether it is what logically valid or not. Otherwise, when we meet next time, we shall discuss some more examples on what inference theory. Okay. So thank you for watching.